We all are mesmerized by the stock market and always have planned to invest in the market and travel the way through the risks, the ups and downs of the market, and a fortune for ourselves. But have you ever thought, who is the biggest, greatest trader of the market till date? The first name that might come to mind is Warren Buffett. But actually, that's not true. The greatest trader in the history of the market is actually Jim Simons. Hey everyone, and welcome back to Wealth Professor, the go-to destination to learn personal finance, business and entrepreneurship. Make sure to subscribe for our weekly videos where we will help you become financially smarter without gatekeepers. Today we are going to talk about the greatest trader that earned millions and billions from the market by his precise calculations. No guesses, no luck, just pure calculations. Stay with us till the end of this video to learn the methods that Simons used to earn a hell of a lot of money, more than anyone ever earned from the market. The first shock that might be hard for you to digest is that Simons' background hardly suggested that he would one day lead one of the most successful, if not the most successful, quantitative hedge fund operation in the world. Simon was born in 1938 to a Jewish family that operated a small shoe factory. Simons, in his very early age, aspired to be a mathematician. He continued his interest to be a mathematician and ultimately received a BS degree from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology at the age of 20. This was just the beginning step for him and went on to get a PhD from the University of California, Berkeley, at the age of 23. His doctoral thesis presented a new proof of Berger's classification of the holonomy groups of Riemannian manifolds. Later, in collaboration with Xing Shen Chern, he discovered and proved what is now known as the Chern Simons theorem, or associated theory, which deals with three dimensional quantum field theory and also has applications in string theory and quantum computing. An incident was when he was sitting at a cafe, and there he saw his professors discussing some mathematical theories. That very moment, Simons decided that he wanted a life like this, where cigarettes, coffee, and mathematics were his daily routine. He went far ahead in his research. He excelled and developed new phases in mathematics, for which, and some related work, in 1976, he received the Oswald Veblen Prize in Geometry. Not satisfied with being an accomplished academic mathematician, in 1964 he joined the Communication Research Division of the Institute for Defense Analyses, IDA, near Princeton, New Jersey, to work on cryptographic problems for the U.S. government. He did excellent work, but was fired after writing a letter to the New York Times expressing opposition to the Vietnam War. He then accepted the position of Chair of the Department of Mathematics at Stony Brook University, a public university on Long Island about 60 miles east of New York City, where he served for nearly 12 years. Still not satisfied, in 1978, at the age of 40, Simons resigned from his position at Stony Brook and embarked on a quixotic stab at financial markets. Founding a company named Monometrics, later named Renaissance Technologies, while at IDA, Simons had briefly investigated applying an algorithm developed by Lenny Baum and Lloyd Welch to financial markets. He had also been briefly involved with a Colombian floor tile importing business. But other than that, Simons was utterly unqualified for a financial venture. He had no training or background whatsoever in business, finance, or market trading. The reaction of Simons' mathematical colleagues was a combination of astonishment and outrage. Simons and Lenny Baum, whom he soon hired, explored whether the Baum-Welch algorithm or other mathematical statistical approaches could be applied to financial markets. The first few years were not promising. While some efforts succeeded and others soured, leaving their investment fund nearly depleted, and Simons rather depressed, but instead of giving up, he redoubled his efforts to find actionable signals in financial data. Simons, either directly or through spin-offs that he oversaw, subsequently hired several additional staff members, including James Axe, a prominent number theorist, Elwin Burlkamp, a prominent expert in coding theory, game theory, and computer science, Rene Carmona, an expert in stochastic differential equations, and Nick Patterson, whom Simons had known at IDA. Together, these researchers developed some new techniques and software that appeared to work quite well. Although there were setbacks, their investment fund, 
later renamed the Medallion Fund, started growing from $20 million in 1988 to $66 million in 1993. At this point, Simons concluded that he needed some additional high-powered expertise in computer science and machine learning. So he hired IBM researchers Robert Mercer and Peter Brown, who had been developing speech recognition techniques at IBM's Yorktown Heights Research Laboratory. Mercer and Brown further improved the fund's algorithms, data processing facilities, and trading software, resulting in significant new gains. Simons then hired additional mathematicians and computer scientists, together with an eclectic group of physicists, astronomers, and signal processing experts, hardly any of whom had training in business or finance. The Medallion Fund grew from $66 million in 1993 to $2.4 billion in 2000, and to $10 billion in 2010, when Simons finally resigned as Renaissance CEO turning operation of the fund over to Mercer and Brown, although he remains chairman of the board. Although the fund's total assets are now fixed at $10 billion, it continues to generate enormous profits for those fortunate enough to be investors. From 2011 to 2018, the fund's annual returns averaged a whopping 74% before fees and 39% after fees, returns that are easily and consistently the best in the industry. Renaissance also now offers three funds for outside investors, namely the Renaissance Institutional Equities Fund, or RIEF, the Renaissance Institutional Diversified Equities Funds, or RIDGE, and the Renaissance Institutional Diversified Alpha, or RIDA. Simons also founded the Simons Foundation. In 1994, Simons and his wife established the Simons Foundation, a New York philanthropic organization with an annual budget currently set at $450 million that funds research in mathematics, computer science, physics, cosmology, biology, autism, and education. Among other things, the foundation operates the Quantum Magazine, which is one of the world's best news sources in mathematics, computer science, physics, and biology. Simons has also founded Math for America, which among other things grants stipends of $18,000 per year for five years to selected outstanding high school teachers. Success is never attained without getting some troubles. Simons faced numerous setbacks, failures, and other incidents that nearly ruined his operation, particularly in the early days. For example, in 1989, after Burl Camp's programmed trading in Canadian currency improbably yielded no profits, Simons called a trader at the Chicago Board of Trade, who alerted him that fraud might be involved, and that the trading firm they were using might go under. Simons quickly closed his funds account with that trading firm, narrowly escaping potentially disastrous losses. In addition, Simons' personal life has often been marked by disappointment and tragedy. In 1974, his wife Barbara Bluestein divorced him. Then in 1996, his 34-year-old son Paul was killed while riding a bicycle, followed in 2003 when his 24-year-old son Nicholas drowned while on a trip to Bali, Indonesia. According to those who know Simons personally, these tragedies left deep scars. Managing his team of researchers has also been very trying. Several of the original employees, including Baum, Axe, and Burlkamp, subsequently left for various reasons, ranging from health problems and a desire to live elsewhere to deep dissatisfaction with how the firm was being managed. Controversy has beset the firm at several junctures. In 2014, Simons and Renaissance Technologies, along with several other large hedge funds, came under fire for using sophisticated barrier options to reduce taxes. Then in 2016, Mercer's right-wing political activism came to light. In the 2016 election, for instance, Robert Mercer and his daughter Rebecca were major donors and promoters for the Trump campaign. Recalling his own history, Simons was determined not to fire anyone because of their political beliefs. But eventually, in the wake of the controversy and organizational morale problems that ensued, Simons convinced Mercer to step down as co-CEO, although he remains as a researcher. Simons' success has not come easily, not by a long shot. 
Since 1988, Renaissance's flagship medallion hedge fund has generated average annual returns of 66%, racking up trading profits of more than $100 billion. No one in the investment world comes close. Warren Buffett, George Soros, Peter Lynch, Steve Cohen, and Ray Dalio all fall short. More than the trading successes intrigued me. Early on, Simons made a decision to dig through mountains of data, employ advanced mathematics, and develop cutting-edge computer models, while others were still relying on intuition, instinct, and old-fashioned research for their own predictions. Simons inspired a revolution that has since swept the investing world. By early 2019, hedge funds and other quantitative, or quant, investors had emerged as the market's largest players, controlling about 30% of stock trading, topping the activity of both individual investors and traditional investing firms. MBAs once scoffed at the thought of relying on a scientific and systematic approach to investing, confident they could hire coders if they were ever needed. Today, coders say the same thing about MBAs, if they think about them at all. Simon's pioneering methods have been embraced in almost every industry and reach nearly every corner of everyday life. He and his team were crunching statistics more than three decades ago, long before these tactics were embraced in Silicon Valley. The halls of government, sports stadiums, doctor's offices, military command centers, and pretty much everywhere else forecasting is required. Simon's developed strategies to corral and manage talent turning raw brain power and mathematical aptitude into astonishing wealth. He made money from math, and a lot of money at that. A few decades ago, it wasn't remotely possible. Lately, Simons has emerged as a modern-day Medici, subsidizing the salaries of thousands of public school math and science teachers, developing autism treatments, and expanding our understanding of the origins of life. Simons and his team shouldn't have been the ones to master the market. Simons never took a single finance class, didn't care very much for business, and until he turned 40, only dabbled in trading. A decade later, he still hadn't made much headway. Heck, Simons didn't even do applied mathematics. He did theoretical math, the most impractical kind. His firm, located in a sleepy town on the north shore of Long Island, hires mathematicians and scientists who don't know anything about investing or the ways of Wall Street. Some are even outright suspicious of capitalism. Yet, Simons and his colleagues are the ones who change the way investors approach financial markets, leaving an industry of traders, investors, and other pros in the dust. It's as if a group of tourists on their first trip to South America, with a few odd-looking tools and meager provisions, discovered El Dorado and proceeded to plunder the Golden City, as hardened explorers looked on in frustration. Thank you for watching the video. We hope that Simon's story inspired you. If you learned something new from this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel. And while you're here, click on one of the videos on the screen. See you there.